Hello and welcome to Equipped. We are back after a little bit of a hiatus due to vacations and those kinds of things. And we wanted to have a little bit of a chat because since we've been away, there's been quite a bit happening in the, wor in the world and indeed in the UK. And we've still had a fundamental focus on the world of emotional intelligence and always think about that as, as we've been on various vacations and days away and those kinds of things. But I was asked a question over this period. Uh, I was having lunch with, uh, with a friend and we were talking about emotional intelligence and they asked a question about if I was dropped on the border of a war zone, say Israel and Gaza, where there's a lot of problems going on right now, how could emotional intelligence help? Now, <laughs> this took me back, I must admit, this took me back and it, it really made me think because we deal with a lot of the topics that we discuss on a far more micro level than that. Yeah. Uh, we are dealing with interpersonal um, situations and not that kind of level. But it was a really interesting thought process to what think. What did you say? Well, if we, if we take it back to emotional... See you later, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, it's kind of, I did this kind of stuff and, and it's like, wow, it's a really did. Uh, but um, we've had a brief chat uh, yeah. about some of this. But it was a really interesting, it'd be interesting to, to hear your views on how, you know, if you could bring emotional intelligence to that kind of macro level, how would it make a difference from those four quadrants of self-awareness, self-management, social or other awareness and interaction management, but at the level of culture, society, countries, governments, those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and it really does add a different spin on how we think about conflict. And in the UK, we've had situations of civil unrest and those yeah, kind yeah. of things. So um, what are your thoughts on <laughs> on this? Well, before we continue, this is still Aaron. Oh, I'm still Harry. I'm still Aaron. It's, it's good to be back. It's been a while. <laughs> um, sorry, you were saying? <laughs> My thoughts. <laughs> your thoughts, your thoughts. Uh, yeah, that's a question I wouldn't dream to answer. Yeah. Um, really. It's... Um, because the thing is with emotional intelligence is you can have it, but you have to actually choose to use it. I don't think it's necessarily a lack of emotional intelligence. I think it's just a unwillingness to actually go there. Mm. I think there's there's a there's a an idea or a mission in mind, and emotional intelligence in 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 the way of actually building bridges would hinder what they're trying to do out there. Mm. Um, so it's a, it's an impossible question to answer really. Mm. I think there's, there's, there's definitely emotional intelligence within the people It's when it comes to the leaders, uh, where I think there's going to be, uh, a reluctance to even, um, entertain the idea of understanding one another to try and build those bridges. Uh, and that's a sad thing. I mean, yeah. it's, and that's what we're seeing here in the UK as well, uh, as far as there's been an uprising of the far right. Um, against you know the immigration and migrants and there's any attempt to actually engage in an emotionally intelligent discussion about that I just don't think people are ready for that yet because there's just there's just far too much anger mm. and they, they feel like that point hasn't been made enough yet to almost engage on um, an, a constructive dialogue mm. And uh, that's the problem. If there's not if there's not a will, then all the emotional intelligence in the world won't make it happen. Yeah, because right now you have uh, a, a, a government or governments, um, in particular the UK government, that are you know they're really thinking about the best the best way forward. And obviously they are talking to leaders. They are talking to people within the community and those kinds of things to work out the best the best way of going forward. So they're getting that, but they're not talking to everybody potentially. So they, they it's they're coming from their own kind of position of this is what we think is 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 best. And I think there's a, a problem in that by not listening to everybody involved in some of these things, they're not getting all of the messages and they're tiring with quite a big brush. And I think what we saw was. Yeah. You mentioned the far right, and there was definitely uh, a huge swathe uh, of far right people and just idiots um, that were out for 
for attention. Um, I mean, two of the same things. thing. Those guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 to be <laughs> fair. Um, and those those guys were out there and and just taking it as an excuse to smash things up. You now I watched a video on YouTube, um, and there were like 11, 12 year olds that were just protesting, uh, but just walking down the street and smashing up random terrace houses. Yeah. Um, that had no connection with anything that any message that was trying to be conveyed. Literally they, shitting on their own doorstep. They, yeah, yeah, just smashing up cars, smashing up. And there's there's that kind of behavior, the looting and all that kind of stuff um, that the government to come down hard on. Um, there's, there's, there is no excuse for that kind of thing. No. Uh, but, and, not but, <laughs> and there are some people that were in that protest that, that did feel that they had a right to process, peaceful protest. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and I think that's where some of the, the issues with some of the rhetoric that came out of the government caused more problems with with tarring everybody with with that same um, brush. As we say. Yeah, it was, it, it was lazy, I think. And I think a lot of it was about self-protectionism in the sense that the government has got us to where we are. I mean, I know we've got a new government who's come in. Mm. Um, however, year after year, every single election, the uh, public in Britain have been told, we're going to get migration down. And they keep telling us that, but it keeps going up. So it's not, you don't necessarily have to be super right wing, racist, bigoted to be upset of promises being broken. Mm. And I think people have got a right to express um, how pissed off they are at the fact that they keep getting told something and it's not happening. Mm. And as you said, it's, it's been slightly tarnished by a bunch of thugs who are creating yeah. mayhem. But where the government have probably, well, no, where they have messed up a little bit is they've too quickly kind of tarnished everyone as right wing thugs. Mm. And the problem they've got is people, a lot of those people there, the majority, I would say, because of course we only see the images of smashed up yeah. cars and buses on fire. There'll be loads of people who generally are upset um, about that broken promise. And the more that they're banded in with the people who are smashing up buses, the more the government are actually going to push them in that direction. You know, if, if you're constantly getting uh, accused of thieving and everyone assumes you're thieving all the time, you're probably going to fucking thieve. Because, you know, if I'm going to get blamed for it anyway, why not? Um, and the government just needs to probably relax a little bit on that and... I think the slowly getting there, the media are probably doing their best to try and ham up the fact of how much violence there is, but we've seen loads of peaceful protests. Mm. Yeah. And the problem is you just don't get reported as much. Well, I think there's, there's there's a problem in that as well, in that I was listening to the, the news and there was, they were speaking to a particular um, lady that lived in a, an area of the country, I can't remember where it was, and the question was, do you feel safe? So she was, I'm not sure where she was from uh, in the world's uh, you know, ethnic background or anything, but um, do you feel safe in your community? And her response was, um, I, I've seen no problems um, in my community. However, looking at the news, yes, I do feel unsafe. Yeah. So the news is perpetuating uh, some of that stuff. So there was no issue of safety. But because of what's being reported, it changes people's perception of the community. It's like, yes, 100%. the community is unsafe, yet I have no evidence for that in my community. Um, and so that, I think the media has a lot to answer for with regards to its reporting um, yeah. and, and not showing, as you say, some of the, the peaceful protests um, should be shown as well uh, and document that rather than just trying to sensationalise what's going on with the you know, the far right side and the thuggery and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, they're not stupid. They know fear does two things. It sells and yeah. it controls. And right now, big media, that's what they're looking to do. Mm. Um, and what the government have got to try to do is pull themselves away from that rather than being absorbed into it. Yeah. Um, and actually look at rather than trying to create division, try and build bridges. And this goes back to the question of, you know, what would you do in the West Bank? Yeah. You know, the, the whole goal is to try and build bridges. Um, and it starts with empathy. And it's people people often confuse empathy 
with it's a bit it's 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 feeling how others feel which in many people's eyes is almost like it's it's just a hippie way you know mm. let's all take drugs and feel each other and all that but it's not really it's it's about understanding why someone else would feel a particular way um and if you can do that if you can go on that journey it's much easier to open a dialogue you don't have to agree it's just about understanding their perspective and if you understand it you can open up the conversation and you can influence it yeah um and it's much much easier to start building bridges when you kind of you build the bridge from your side first definitely yeah and i think it's so we're talking conflict management at this point on a on a smaller yeah, scale yeah. all the way up to a, a a macro scale and it's it's where you address um the situation because you don't if you leave things to fester um and by kind of labeling everybody with the same thing uh, and not addressing it you are exacerbating um, a yeah. problem and those people feel less heard than they did originally which is why they were protesting which then pushes them on further because they don't believe any change is happening there um, and there's a, a model uh, that we talk about in some of our training which is that staircase um, of terrorism yeah so go on, walk us through which that leads, which leads us from that point of view where we're all at the beginning so this is from um, Fatali Mogadab and you start everybody starts off on the ground floor we're all stay on the ground floor usually unless we feel like there's something that is causing us to believe that we're disenfranchised in some way or you know, being unfairly treated or we're you know, not being heard, those kinds of things. So life isn't great. And if we're in that situation, then we want to make a change, which is when we move up to that second. So floor. this base layer is just kind of just we're no, all, no real concern either way, just steady. Yeah. Right. We're, we're all there, but we're, we're all there on that ground floor. But if we feel like, you know, uh, this is not fair, um, I'm not, you know, um, getting what I'm entitled to, or I feel disenfranchised, or it's there's an unfairness in society, then we tend to move up a staircase, mm -hmm. which is where we want to make a difference uh, and actually make a change, that social mobility stuff. And when you move up to that second mm -hmm. thing, if you then have the ability to make a change and you, you protest and something happens, for example, or you, you shout and you ask questions and, and that happens, then cool, great, you're back down and, and everything's happy again. But if you don't, if you see that there's a, a lack of justice or an inability to do anything else, then that's when you move up again. And that's what we're seeing in the UK yeah. to that third step, which is where we start to displace aggression. They go, I'm really angry with the situation. And where do I point that anger toward? Um, and, you know, is it the government? Um, is it a particular group of people? Yeah. Um, in this case, you know, targeting immigrants for example because you know it's all the immigrants fault and all that kind of stuff is that's the rhetoric that's being thrown out and when you have loud speakers or organizations that that grab those people and tell them the reason this is the case is because of those yeah you know, those organizations and those types of people are looking to hook those people and recruit into that um into that system so you end up then with this displaced aggression going into that uh, direction if we still don't get what we want, then that can move up to the next step, which is when we start to shift in our, our moral um, engagements. We disengage from our current models and think, well, you know what, maybe violence is um, a way to go. So you would say we're touching into, well, that's a fourth step. Well, so this, yeah, so this will be the kind of the fourth step. So we've moved away now from, okay, we're, we're displacing aggression on where do we point this, this anger up to that point of now we're thinking, um, okay, you know what, you know, violence isn't bad but i think now um, maybe it is and it's easy to convince people at that point so again you're talking about you know, people that are loud speakers in in worlds of trying to convince people especially in a terrorist situation yeah move them into that you know what it is justified and uh, so you start to shift people in that moral behavior uh, and the next step is then to do that them versus us piece so people move up from that once those morals are, are shifting to move them up to they're evil, they're bad people over there. We're the good people, we're the righteous people, we're the ones that are um, fighting the best fight. We're doing the right thing, that's wrong. And then obviously the next step up from that would be terrorist act. So we're not saying people that are involved in the riots and things are up there, but it's a Some danger. It's a danger. Very close it's, to it's, it's a, well, I think they use terrorism um, act, they were looking at using terrorism act to, to get people to get through, get the get through yeah. courts anyway. So, so you're seeing those steps from 
people that are feeling like you know, they're unheard, there's injustice, to then move up to that step of trying to make a difference but being unable to be heard and not doing anything, to yeah. then displacing their mm -hmm. anger, to then changing in what's acceptable morally uh, to do about the situation. The danger is then going up there to having a bigger divide, this categorization of them versus us, you know, whether it's you know, us versus immigrants or whatever it might be that them versus us is, which is what we were seeing in those riots, very much that um, thing. You know, there were um, uh, temples and mosques and everything being um, destroyed and, yeah. and vandalized and all those kinds of things. Um, so you, you're seeing that division. And then the next step is then you know, you, you're, you're a hero because you're fighting the good fight and, and off you go. We see that a lot, obviously, in kind of the Islamist terrorism side, and that's where a lot of the, the research came from. But you can see that same thing in all kind of processes of that radicalization step, moving from being unhappy and not being able to do anything about it to the point where you'll do something silly about it. Um, do you think the government are doing the right thing to almost prevent people from getting onto that fifth and sixth? step right now uh, that's where a lot of the research came from so a lot of the research is looking at there's not you shouldn't be focusing on those steps up there anyway because by the time Someone's someone gets to those it's too late by yeah. that point because there, there's already a, a heavily ingrained indoctrinated kind of sense of you know you, you're you're doing the right thing because you've had a complete moral yeah. shift because we um, see it with de-radicalization as well like it takes years yeah. to get someone down from level six down back to a zero yeah and the problem is it's it seems like it's taken a very short, maybe it hasn't taken a short period of time from going from maybe naught to two, mm. but from three to five, it seems like it's been very, very quick. Yeah. And it almost seems like if you, if you don't address it when it's at two and three, mm. it can progress all the way up unbelievably yeah. quickly. And then once someone's there, it takes ages to get them back down. Yeah. So if you miss it at like two, level two or three, or you don't address it at two or three, you're kind of screwed, aren't you? Yeah. And that's the thing where people are feeling... You know, uh, I'm not happy. I want to be heard, at least heard, um, and where that's not happening. So if, that's step two. And if you then labeling people as, you know, we're not listening to you, you've got nothing to say, you're far right, you've then got that face, you're making that problem worse, um, yeah. which then creates more displacement of um, aggression um, at that next step and moving on up. And then you start to have shifts in the morals. So, yeah, getting people early on and being fair about. A system of justice, obviously, um, but listening to all sides uh, of, of an argument. Um, and yeah, peaceful protest. Yeah, everyone has a right, to, not everyone. In the UK, we have a right to protest. Um, and that's what we don't have a right to do is you know, hate speech and all those kinds of things. Yeah. And that's what we were seeing, um, which is people that have moved further up and they're doing that then versus us, you know, in group versus out group stuff. Um, so yeah, I think there's. It, it, you, you can see what's happening and it goes up and down, you know, and then it will go quiet for a, for a little bit and then someone else will shout loud enough uh, and you've got some people that have got loud enough voices to rally people around them. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are, there are plenty of people out there and you've got famous celebrities, I won't mention <laughs> names, but there are people that are saying the wrong thing at the right time to cause a stir. Um, yeah. And that's what we saw. Um, well, I think it was Andrew Tate was one of the, the messages that came out after the, the Southport um, tragedy. Yeah, um, and it, that Elon was Musk. one, and Elon Musk. it was one of those those instigators of, of that message being um, sent out there to create that them versus us, in group versus in group out group kind of thing, yeah. uh, adding more fuel to the fire, um, false information clearly, as we all know, um, and where you have that more radical person, um, and radical, I'm talking on a threshold of someone that doesn't get involved with protests at all you know that yeah. more conservative side not the party but conservative side with regards to protesting down to radical the people that will start it um yeah we're all on a spectrum and these people are often very charismatic uh, and they shout loud enough and have a following enough to rally enough people and the more people that they're there the people that are over here will start to gravitate to them because more people are doing it yeah um so that threshold of when you get involved with this kind of stuff um, and then you have some people that join the party just because they want to smash the fuck, um, as we saw. I mean, that actually, um, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, but the whole idea now that it seems like uh, the right wing of society are having a bit more of a, a resurgence, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder how much that is connected to the 
increase in um, kind of fight against free speech and how nowadays it's it's much harder to speak your mind without being put down yeah. uh, by society. And everyone's always said the moment where you shut down um, discussion, mm. it will just go down into the sewers and kind of yeah. ferment. Yeah. Um, and it feels like now that an opportunity has been given to them and the opportunity, I think the first thing that kind of blew everything up was um, the stabbing of the young girls. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that gave an opportunity for everyone to kind of rise up and rightfully so, everyone was really, really angry. Angry, I think, are throwing rocks at the wrong people. Yeah. I mean, not that you should throw rocks, but... Um, and it was it was big enough to pull that all out. And I think if the dialogue had always been there, if we hadn't been kind of trampling on free speech as much as we had been, would the immediate impact of that have been as big and explosive as it was? Mm. And I think that's a valid point because if you know, people are afraid to say something, so people aren't happy with the status quo, and mm. then, but they're, they don't think they have a right to say anything or they have the option <laughs> of saying anything because they're afraid of being shutting down, being shut down, then it's it's that same problem of that second staircase, isn't it? It's like, I'd like to make a difference in the world, but every time I try and say something, I get shut You're down. You're absolutely right, yeah. Um, so then I'll take it out on someone else, um, which is the next step, you know, because I can't make a difference, I'll take it out on someone else. So so is there a, a, a crossover there? Um, so by shutting anyone down, whether you are um, where you have strong views from a, a right or a left, and, you know, it doesn't, we, we make those categories and again they're very them and us kind of categories that we play into when we do those things but there, there's been a lot of very vocal um, right and far right um, rhetoric that's coming out right now but equally we've had a lot on the left as well um, yeah. and as soon as someone comes out and says anything that's more right you're getting what you're talking about which is that you can't say that um, and if you can't say that but it's my it's how I feel now there is a line in law that says, you know, you hate speech, you can't do hate speech and all that kind of stuff, but we shouldn't be shutting down people that are that are angry, annoyed at the world um, or feel unfairly treated yep. as long as they're not being hateful. So you can still have constructive dialogue. No matter how strong your views, we should still be able to have those very heated debates uh, without um, demonising either side. To be fair. It's such an interesting point that I've always thought about um, the frustrations people have about not being hurt, so that, that level two you're talking mm -hmm. about will always come from authority or government. But what we've seen over the last kind of four or five years is it's actually coming from society. Yeah. So it's not, it's, yes, it is coming from the media, the government, um, and the big authority organizations out there. But really, the, the thing that is starting to piss everyone off. Is it society, it's the social media, it's the groups um, who are just normal people who have almost been jumping on people and canceling people. And I've never thought of it in that way, really. I've mm. always seen it as being like a top down thing, but it's kind of side to side now as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I think it's, it, and again, coming back to emotional intelligence. It's about that, yeah, being self-aware um, and managing yourself and wanting to, to listen, wanting to be more socially aware, more widely, um, not just social awareness as in me versus me, me versus you, me and you, but the, the wider society, let's listen, let's be socially aware to what everybody is saying, how everybody feels, yeah. so that we can then move to that interaction management and manage uh, the interactions within society in in the right way. And if people don't feel they're getting what they want, we know that's a universal trigger for anger. Yeah. Um, so that's when you get the displaced anger. So yeah, I think it's a an interesting <laughs> an interesting thing to consider. It's a big question, and it all started from that one question I was asked around being dropped on the border of a of a conflict zone. Clearly, well, just let's go back but, to that then. So if we just bring it a little bit closer to home, 
what if you were dropped in between the protests that are happening now and Parliament? Would you be able? Would you? Would you be comfortable in addressing that question? Well, I think it's the same. It's it's not the same thing. So on on scale, it's it's completely different, obviously, uh, and the topic is different. But it still requires both sides to look at the other side, um, and it's that perceptual shift, isn't it? Of yeah, everybody is, everybody is on both sides. Government shouldn't be because the government should have panels and communication with community and be getting all messages, but are they? Because within a government, you have a government that is a Labour government or a Conservative government, so the people within that that they listen to predominantly are people that have the same values, yeah. views, beliefs, those kinds of things. Um, and the same on this side. There's a group of people that are all surrounded by the same people with the same kinds of messages. So it's harder um, it's, it's harder to, to hear and think about the other side. Um, so the government needs to make sure that they're listening to everybody within that group. So there are, yes, there are far right people in there. There are thugs in there. You don't need to listen to the thugs. They're just there to cause a ruckus. Don't need to listen to the thugs. They'll do more if you don't listen to them, but you know what I mean? So, but the, the more um, balanced voices that are in there from different areas of this huge swathe of people, some that are just feeling really annoyed and really unheard, some over here that feel really badly treated, some over here that feel something else. All of these voices need to be listened to. Um, and these, these people over here need to consider that the government are trying to balance so many different views. So they, it, they can't, it's difficult to please absolutely everybody. So yeah. whatever they do, someone's going to be unhappy. Um, I wouldn't want the job in the government for that reason, because you're having to take from one place to give to another with budgets and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but they've just got to be careful with, I think, that from a PR point of view, it's it's the, the narrative that comes out there, at that big labeling uh, yeah. a, approach. And again, that comes down to, it's, it's conflict management, but it's not per se emotional intelligence, but it is really. It's that being aware of us um, and wanting to pay attention to other and really trying to build that bridge um, that you were talking about earlier to, to have some kind of level of dialogue. While the anger is really high, that's not going to happen, yeah. really, because refractory period, you know, people um, will see the world through the lens of the anger they feel. Yeah. Um, so now would be a good time because things have quietened down in the UK, find the people, find those radicals that kicked things off uh, in those protests. Some of them are in uh, prison now, obviously. Um, but um, yeah, find, find those people, the, the peaceful protesting people that have a point that they believe is valid and want to be heard and, and get around the table and speak to those people. Um, All together, you know, if, if it's possible, um, yeah. it depends how how well balanced those people are and if they can have a, a debate without it being hateful or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. But anyway, so that was that was that was some depth. <laughs> it's, it's not something that we've really thought about up to up to this point, beyond kind of yes, we we talk about things like terrorism, radicalization and stuff within programs, but um, yeah, I think it's it's one of those things that yeah, we're not gonna be able to fix it. Um, but I think the more people that become aware of um, what we're we're trying to do, um, I'd like to think like an entire government will watch the Equipped podcast and, and think, you know what, those guys have a point, but I doubt that. But hopefully um, there are ideas that you have and we'd like to hear about them in the comments. And we will both be back probably next week. I think we've got a plan, right? Definitely next week. Yeah, <laughs> we've, we've got, we'll a, we've got a plan. Week. No. So any ideas, throw them in. We've got a few, but you know, we'll add a few more in. Definitely. And uh, we'll see you then. Excellent. Thanks very much. All the best.